I'm going to show you everything the bank will want from you in order to get a new construction loan to build your own house. So first you need to find a lender. There are many options out there and they all offer different sorts of new construction home loans, but you have to sort through them and find the ones with the best terms. I recommend a good place to look is your local credit unions. Many have very competitive terms and they allow you the flexibility to pick your own builder as long as they can verify their experience and track record before you build. It's pretty common to see them require a 10 to 20% down payment, but they will loan on the land purchase and the construction cost itself. Then they will normally give you nine to 12 months of interest only payments during the construction, which allows you to have a lower monthly payment during the construction. And they probably will charge you a 1% origination fee, which means they'll charge you a fee of 1% of the loan amount. You can also talk to mortgage brokers as they will normally know lenders that have a new construction loan product. However, you wanna be careful because some of these lenders require you to use their own in-house builder, which can normally be more expensive than other builders. However, some of these mortgage brokers can give you better down payment terms. If you don't have as much money up front, you can get as low as 5% down payment for a new construction loan that will lend on the land purchase and the construction costs. However, whoever you decide to reach out to, make sure to ask these following questions. One, how much is the down payment? Is it 5%, 10%, or 20%? This will make a big difference on how much money you need to put up out of pocket, and you can work around your budget to find a lender that can do a lower down payment. Next, you wanna ask, is the loan interest only during the construction phase, or is it amortized from the start? What this basically means is, if it's interest only, during the construction phase, you're only paying interest on the loan, so you have a lower monthly payment. If it's amortized from the start, that means you're paying down the principal of the loan and the interest. So you're paying down the balance of your loan from the get-go. However, your monthly payment is gonna be higher. So you have to figure out what's more important for your situation. Is it a lower monthly payment while the house is being built? Or do you wanna get the loan paid down faster? So whatever is right for you, you just make sure you ask that question so you can decide which loan product you want to get. Next, you want to ask if you can choose your own builder or do you have to use the lender's builder or is there a certain list of approved builders by the lender that you have to pick from? This can all make a big difference as different builders have wildly different pricing on new construction. Next, you want to ask them how the draws work for the new construction loan. How often are the draws? Are there inspection fees? Do the draws go directly to the builder or do they go to you as the homeowner and then you pay the builder yourself? Next, you wanna ask, is there just a one-time closing or do you have to do a refinance into a permanent loan after the construction is complete? The reason you wanna ask this is because the difference between one set of closing costs and two is pretty significant. Normally a closing from bank fees, legal fees, loan fees, etc., will all run about $10,000 to $20,000. So if you're paying say $20,000 for the first loan closing, and then you have to refinance again after construction and pay another $20,000, that's an extra $20,000 into your budget that you have to pay for the loan. However, if it's a one-time close and the loan just rolls into a permanent loan, you're saving that extra set of closing costs that can be a lot of money. Next, you wanna ask them, do you loan on the land purchase itself or just on the construction part of things? And then if they do loan on the land purchase, do they also loan on the soft costs, like the architectural plans, the civil engineering, the structural plans, the permits, etc. Now, the second thing you need when you're trying to get a new construction loan is finding a builder. Now, there are a lot of options when it comes to home builders, but you have to be careful because if someone is building for the personal home and they don't have real estate experience, a lot of builders will upcharge them a lot more. I'm in Houston, Texas, and when I was trying to do my first construction project, although it wasn't for a personal home, it was for an investment, I was just looking at builders on Google and sending them the plans to get bid and I was getting prices back from $150 a square foot to $180 a square foot. And I know in Houston, that's way too high for a standard builder grade finish for new construction spec homes. Obviously, if you're adding custom finishes and higher end fixtures to your build, it's gonna cost more. But what I would do is just have each builder quote you for standard builder grade first, so you can compare them all equally and then add in your custom fixtures or the add-ons you wanna do to make your personal home nicer. I was finally able to get a builder from word of mouth referral from another investor that had built quite a few homes before and he came back at a much more reasonable price of $125 a square foot. As you can see, that's a $25 to $55 a square foot difference and a 2,000 square foot house, that's a $50,000 to $100,000 difference in savings. Obviously, every market has different construction costs, but the principles are still the same. Make sure you get quotes for standard builder grade finishes so you can compare them equally. And if you feel like the quotes you're getting are too high, just keep looking. It's very hard for individual homeowners to find good, reasonable builders that normally build for investors and do a lot of volume and give good pricing. A good tip to find builders is to go to real estate Facebook groups. A lot of times in your area, 
there will be a real estate investors Facebook page or Facebook group and a real estate contractors Facebook page or Facebook group in your local market. A lot of times you can find builders of more reasonable pricing in these groups as they work for investors who have to make a profit themselves. Another option is to look at new construction homes on the market and ask your realtor to contact the listing agent or the owner or the builder of those homes and ask for referrals. Obviously, I'm not talking about those big giant subdivisions that are newly built from DR Horton or big builders like that, but small individual developments, you can actually reach out to the agent that's listing them and ask the owner and the seller who built the homes and refer the builder. The good part about this strategy is you can also go and look at the homes and see the work and finishes of the builder to decide if you like that builder or not. Now, a lot of people would just ask friends or family that built houses before for a word of mouth referral. I actually advise against that. Unless your friend or family member is in real estate and are investors that make profits, I wouldn't ask them because they're probably paying a home builder that's gonna build at retail prices for individual homeowners. If you're looking for someone that's building for investors that have reasonable pricing so you can have equity in the home or make a profit if you have to sell it in the future. To qualify builders, you wanna ask these questions. First, what is their price per square foot to build? Now make sure you tell them that you want pricing just for generic builder grade finishes. If they ask for one architectural plans and structural plans before they give a bid, just push back and say, hey, I don't have the plans yet, but I'm gonna get them soon once I get my lot. I just want a ballpark pricing to get an idea of your pricing. That way you can at least have some sort of estimate in your mind when you're looking at these builders. The next question you wanna ask is what is their pricing structure? A lot of times builders will charge a flat fee per house as their builder fee, and then all the costs of the subcontractors are passed on directly to you. Another way is to give you a price per square foot price that's all inclusive of the cost and their profits. So you don't know how much they're actually making and you just get one flat rate, which a lot of times can be more simple. And then the last way is a cost plus method where they charge you the price of the subcontractor plus a percentage markup. For example, if the concrete guy charges 10,000, they might charge 10,000 plus a 20% markup and charge you $12,000. You wanna find out how they charge the pricing because it can make a big difference. I prefer the flat fee method where they just charge me a flat fee and I know exactly what the subcontractors are charging me and I'm not paying an upcharge as I believe that's the most transparent way. And if you make any changes or you change out subcontractors, it's not gonna affect the profits of the builder. So he's not as worried as long as he can get the right subcontractors and do it at a good price, everything is good. While someone that just gives you a flat price per square foot and includes the profits, if you wanna make changes or add in a different subcontractor, it can get very messy because that's gonna mess with their profits and their bottom line. Same thing with the cost plus method. They're more incentivized to use the more expensive subcontractors as they earn a percentage of the actual subcontractor price. So they might go for the higher bid so they can get more money. That's why I feel like the most transparent and honest one is that they just charge a flat fee and then all the rest is passed on to you without any upcharge. For example, in Houston, the going rate for a builder fee per home is about $20,000, but that's more for investors when they're building multiple homes on the same lot. So if you're building four houses on the same lot, the builder will charge you $80,000 or 20,000 per house as the flat fee. So if you're just building one personal home, they might charge you a higher fee as they're only working on one house, but takes the same amount of time. So don't be surprised with a $40,000 or $50,000 flat fee. And don't be scared by these high fees because a good builder that does a lot of volume is gonna have connections to good contractors at great prices that you won't be able to find yourself. So you can save potentially more than the builder fee just by them having the right subcontractors at good pricing. The last question you wanna ask is how the payments are made. Most reputable builders won't charge any money upfront. They'll start the project and they won't request a draw or ask for money, usually until the foundation is ready to be poured or the concrete foundation has already been poured. However, if a smaller builder asks for money upfront, it's not necessarily a red flag, but just be careful and make sure you vet the builder and have a really strong contract because sometimes these smaller builders that don't have the scale or the money to float the start of these projects will have to ask for some money up front because that first phase up until concrete can cost over $100,000, $200,000. Also, most builders will have it set up where the bank draws go directly to them as that's a more smooth process, but don't worry. The banks will always have you approve any draw before they send it out. So there's no way the builder can withdraw money from the bank without your approval or your notice. It's going to take some effort to find a good builder at a reasonable price, but considering you're gonna save tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, it's definitely worth the extra effort. You might wanna even start looking for a builder before you even have a lot in mind that you wanna purchase because it can take some time to really vet out these builders and you're gonna need to have a builder finalized when you approach the bank for your new construction loan. After you have a lender and a builder, you're gonna need architectural plans. 
The problem is normally you get plans made after you purchase the lot as it's designed around the lot that you bought. If you don't have a lot yet, don't worry. Try to get some generic plans of some housing designs that you like from an architect and just use that for now to get quotes. The reason you're gonna need these plans is one, you have to send it to the builder to get itemized bid. You also have to send the architectural plans to the lender as they're gonna do an appraisal based off the plans. The reason they do this is to make sure that the loan amount is gonna be enough to cover the building costs and the land costs of the property. For example, if you have a piece of land that you like that's $300,000 and then a builder quotes you off some architectural plans of a 2,000 square foot house at $200 a square foot, that's gonna be 300,000 for the land and 400,000 for the construction or $700,000. However, if a lender appraises the home back at $600,000, then you have a problem because you're gonna have to bring either an extra $100,000 to the table as a down payment, or they're just gonna reject the loan altogether. Once you have the plans and you send it to the builder, they need to give you a detailed line item bid for the cost of each part of the new construction project. And the reason you need this is you're gonna send this into the lender and they're gonna calculate the draws that you can draw based off this detailed line item budget from the builder. For example, if the builder puts $20,000 for windows, when they go and draw money for purchasing and installing the windows, the most they can draw out is $20,000. So you have to make sure that the detailed line item bid is gonna be accurate or you're gonna have issues trying to get the draws from the bank in the future. Next, the bank will wanna vet the builder. So you need the builder's resume and experience and track record to send to the bank so they can verify and vet the builder to make sure he's a qualified builder. Once you've taken care of all of those items, the bank is going to want to know more about your finances. They're gonna want the last two to three years of your tax returns and the most recent two to three months of pay stubs. The reason the bank wants to see the last two to three years in your tax returns is they wanna make sure that one, you have consistent income, but two, that you're probably at the same employer or the same job because that shows job stability. So if you're trying to build a house and you just got a job or had a job for a year, I'd say try to wait another year to have at least two years minimum of being at the same job because it shows a lot less risk to the lender. And if you can, three years or more is even better. The reason for this is they don't want to see the risk of you getting fired or losing your job halfway through the construction project and then you can't make the monthly payments or you can't afford the home anymore. Once you finalize the lender, they're gonna send you a loan application and they'll ask all your basic personal information as well as all your income and expenses and all your assets that count towards your net worth. For your income sources, make sure to include everything, not just your day job, if you have side hustles, child support or alimony, inheritance, investment income, workers comp, social security, all of that can be counted towards your total income. For expenses, they're gonna ask you how much are you currently paying for your rent or your current mortgage. Then they'll ask you if you have any car payments, student loan payments, and credit card payments. The reason they ask for all this income and expenses is to calculate your debt to income ratio or your DTI. The DTI shows how much money you're making in comparison to how much your expenses are. And most banks or lenders will have a minimum DTI ratio requirement. And normally that's 1.2. What that means is for every $100 of expenses that you have, they want to see you making $120 of income so that it shows they can cover all your expenses plus more. They will also wanna see if you own other assets like stock investments, real estate, gold, etc., to show that you have collateral to pay back the loan in case something happens. So that's a breakdown of what you will need to get a construction loan to build your own personal home. First, you wanna find a lender, then you wanna find a builder, then you wanna finalize the lot, then you wanna get architectural and structural plans, and then you wanna gather up all your financial information. Keep in mind, all this is for building your own personal residence. What I actually recommend is if you wanna actually save money and have some equity, is to find a piece of land where you can build multiple houses, like two or three or even four houses on the lot, and then build all the houses and sell the other ones and just keep one to live in. But that way, the profits from the other houses will make your basis on your personal home a lot lower. And if you get the land low enough, you can get your own home for free from the profits of the other houses paying off your loan. That's exactly what I did for my personal house right here. I built four houses on one lot and then I sold the other three houses and I kept this one house for myself to live in. I didn't get this house for free, but I did have it at a lower basis than having to build just one house by itself. However, if you wanna go this route, you're probably gonna have to get a business construction loan and you're gonna have to provide LLC documents, business tax returns, etc. So it can be a little hard to get the loan Plus, you will for sure have two sets of closing costs because you have to buy it in the LLC and then at the end, you buy it in your personal name. So that's just something to consider, but it's not for everyone. But I just wanna give that idea out to you in case you have an idea of trying to build more houses at one time and save some money on your own personal home. If you learned anything from this video or got any value out of it, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more real estate content.